Hey, welcome to Bikes, Boats, and Bivouacs. It's a balmy 39 degrees out, but it's not supposed to go below freezing for the next 20 days. So I think we're safe to dewinterize the camper. Now the first thing we're going to do, turn the gas on. So if you notice, I have two tanks and I could open them and run them both, but then you always run the risk of running completely out of propane and you don't realize it. So I keep one tank closed and one open. And then if this one empties, I have this tank to run on. Uh, so if I'm not near a propane fill or you know, I don't have a spare tank, this one's gonna get me through the next couple of days. So that's why I just run one tank at a time. That is your BVB tip of the day. So we're gonna turn that gas on as we start the process of dewinterizing the camper. It's been a cold one. And I already have everything put back in there. I got the bed made. They are golden retriever pillowcases, by the way. Uh, but you can see, you know, there is the pink antifreeze in all the um, in all the spots. So we're going to start this process. We have the bathroom to do, three features in the bathroom. We have the sink to do. We have the sink outside, and we have the outside shower. And we'll also check all the appliances to make sure they're operating properly. So let's get started. So the first thing we do is we're going to check the furnace. So I have the thermostat set at 65 and I have it on furnace because this also controls the air conditioning. So we'll go outside and feel the exhaust to see if it uh, caught. So here's the exhaust for the furnace and it's nice and warm. So we know that it's running. So next up is the stove. Now the stove, one word of caution, those of you that are new with camping, if you see a glass top over your your uh, stove, do not leave this down and turn your burners on, right? This glass will shatter. This is just a protective case when you're not using it. You want to make sure you put this back when you're burning, when you're running your stove. I saw a couple of videos of people had their glass shatter. They didn't understand why. So just make sure uh, you turn that back. So this stove has an automatic sparker, so we'll see if it works. And there we see we got two of them lit. So we just gotta, okay. The burners are all working. The red means they're on. There is a blue light for in the evening, a highlight light. Uh, but if you have any burner turned on, it's gonna be red. Okay, so next up is clearing all the antifreeze out of the water lines. At the beginning of each year, I replace my water filter so we want to run the charcoal dust out of that before we hook it up to the water line. So here you can see, this is my water pressure valve. And then this is my brand new uh, filter. And if I turn this on, you're gonna see some black water coming out of there. See that? So you just want to let that run till it's clear. And that's also true when you're at a campsite, when you're hooking everything up. All right, so I'm gonna shut that water off and now I can hook everything up. So now we have all that hooked up. All right, so we got that connected. Time to turn the water on. All right, now that we have the line, the water line hooked up, it's time to start running the water through the system and getting all that pink stuff out of the sinks. And you can see the pink stuff coming out. It's starting to get clear. There you see the pink stuff from the other side. Okay, let's go into the bathroom and see what we got going on here. First up is the sink. You see the pink stuff coming out. Now to the toilet. Let's 
See, it's pink going down there. And now we have the shower. So the shower I like to hold down here because I don't want it going everywhere. And there you see the pink stuff. And there she comes. All right. So that takes care of clearing everything water-wise on the inside, but we got the two outside areas we gotta check out. So we have this sink right here. And you can see they probably just blew these lines clear with air. That's why you don't see any pink stuff coming out. Okay, so now we gotta do shower. Make sure the outside shower is okay. So there you can see some pink stuff coming out. I'll get that clear. And we'll do the other side. That's the hot water side there. Our next project is going to be sanitizing the water system so this is our water fill for the tank and we're going to put 10 gallons of water in there with a quarter cup of bleach and run it through all the lines and make sure i can smell bleach at each of the places and then uh, we'll do the same thing we'll drain that down and then 10 gallons of water with vinegar let that run through all the system and then we'll also um put regular fresh water in there and clean it out and then she's ready so that's the next process and of course all that needs to be done uh, before you run your hot water heater okay so i added another length of hose to get to this side since the water fill for the onboard water tank is on this side and in here I have a quarter cup of bleach. Cup just cracked. Well, since that uh, plastic cup, I guess with the temperature, cracked when I started to fold it a little more, we're gonna use a shot glass instead. So you can always find something that's gonna work. All right, I got the rest of it down there. Doesn't have to be too exact, but we wanna make sure We've got enough in there, and now when we turn on the water, it's going to mix that all around. We'll get about 10 gallons in there, and we'll turn on all the faucets again and get that through the lines to sanitize the lines. Then we'll drain all that out. Okay, once you have your 10 gallons of water in with your bleach, you want to turn on your water pump. And you want to go through each side, and then once you smell the bleach, then you can move to the next one. Yeah, I can smell it there. And we turn this one on. And we come back here. Do the shower. So now we got to drain that water out of the tank and we've got to replace it with the vinegar and then do the same process with the vinegar. So there's my low point drain for the tank. So that's Draining that tank out. All right, now that we got the bleach done, it's time for the vinegar. So same process, quarter cup of vinegar, 10 gallons of water. My vinegar's here, gonna pour it into the shot glass. Oh, that was close.
fill that up again with the rest of it. And I had poured a little more than a quarter cup because I knew I would lose some of it on the pour. So the old Hard Rock Cafe shot glass coming in handy. The faster you pour it, the more that goes in. So we'll fill that up. Make sure we can smell the vinegar. Then we're ready to flush it with real water. Okay, now that we finished filling the water and vinegar, it's time to turn the water pump on. And we want to wait until we smell the vinegar. And then we'll go through each valve in the place. Yeah, I can definitely smell it there. Now we'll do this one. Okay, we're good there. One thing about that vinegar, you know when it comes through. <laughs> hey, we're good there. I can smell it there. Just down to the shower. I can smell it there. And we got it there. Okay, the final step on the water lines is to drain the tank again. And then we just fill it with fresh water and run all the lines with fresh water. And then we're done. I go out there and I open up the drains and let it drain out again. This is my low point drain. I also have one on the other side. So I open them all. It drains out faster. Low point drains. There's the wet. And there is the other one. All right, I'll bring you back when we start filling it up again. Okay, so now we have the fresh water in there. We drain it until it doesn't smell like vinegar or bleach. We smell a little bit. A couple more seconds. All right, let me get that one. You know, and when you're when you're emptying your tank, you can run as much through these as you want to clear it because you're going to be dropping that anyway. I'll check the shower now. A nice nice pressure on the shower. We'll open this valve. A little bit of air in there, but you can see that's good pressure for a shower. So there's a couple of things that we have to check uh, to make sure, and, and they really uh, are centered around the hot water heater. Now my hot water heater, as you'll see in a minute, is in the back of the rig. If your hot water heater is on the side, uh, just look for an access panel. That's where you're gonna be able to look. And what you wanna do is before you turn on your heater to heat hot water you want to make sure those valves are set so that the water goes through the hot water heater and not bypass it because that's going to create some issues for you so now we want to check the actual hot water heater because there's a spot there where you unhook or you open it up to drain it out in the winter time and most of the time they leave that cap off sometimes there's a long rod that goes in there sometimes your water heater won't have that so we got to check that okay so here's the hot water heater there is the drain valve now some will have a rod in there this one just has a cap so we want to make sure that cap is on there so we don't have any leaking water from the hot water heater so you don't want to strip the threads on these nylon nuts so be careful that it's going on properly All right, I have it finger tight. So we'll check that. All right, so now we just wanna make sure the hot water heater is full before we test it. So you can see there's no drippage from where we put that on, so that's good. If I open this up, I see no water coming in there. So we gotta check those valves because if they're 
if it was open and not on bypass, water would be squirting out of here right now. Now to get to that hot water here, there's an access panel underneath this bed. But the easier way if you have an outdoor kitchen, which is, you know, right next to it, is to pull the refrigerator. And then you have access to the valves real easy. Let me show you that. So my refrigerator just gets attached with two screws right here. So I just pulled this out. Now you can see the hot water here. And you can see this right here is the uh, bypass line and the valve is open. So no water is going in here. So we have to turn that valve. So now the water will come up. It can't go this way, it'll go in. And then this valve we gotta turn. So we turn that valve and now no hot water can come this way, right? It goes out, the hot water goes out into the system. So those valves have to be like that when you want hot water. And then in the winter time, once you winterize it, you turn them the other way so no water can go in there. Now I'll just put the refrigerator back in and we're ready to fill up the hot water heater. Now that we got that done, we need to bleed the air out of this. So now if I just open this a little, you can hear the air coming out as it fills up with water. Okay, so it looks like we got water in there. Now that's filled. You're gonna give it a try and see if the water heats up. Now this particular hot water heater um, runs on gas or electric and you can run it on both if you have a lot of people taking showers or something and you need it to recover faster. So since I'm not hooked up to the 120 yet, here is the water pump, the water heater gas, and the water heater electric. So we're gonna do that. See if it started. And I feel the heat coming out of there. So that's working. It doesn't look like you can see the flame in there. Okay. So we had the hot water running for quite a while, the heater. That water is warm. Run it out of here. Now it's warm, so that's good. And that is warm there. Okay, so we know the hot water heater is working properly. We got all that done. I'm sure there's plenty of different ways to get this done. The process that I use is the one that I like to use. Whether it's 100% correct or not correct, it's always worked for me. So that's why I uh, dewinterize the way I do. So we're going to head to French Creek to Loop C, our favorite loop. I think I have site number two. So that'll be in the next video. But if you thought this video was helpful, consider subscribing to the channel. It's free. It helps me out a lot. Also, ring that bell. You'll be notified every time I put up a new video. And give the video a thumbs up. That helps too. But more important than all that, go have some fun out there. Especially now that it's getting warmer in the Northeast. Thanks for watching.